my friends welcome to this episode of the outdoor gear review today it is 8 19 a.m it is 80 degrees and Susie and I are in South Dakota with this adventure this marks part one of the 2022 summer road trip this one we're doing a little bit different we're not going to film like every single stop along the way we are going to save that sort of trip for later on this year. For this adventure, we're picking up in South Dakota after roughly three days on the road. The travel out here has been just perfect. Folks, there's nobody on the roads. There were sections where it was just Susie and I and no one else. That's pretty crazy. I'm assuming that fuel prices and the economy play a big role in that. As far as the conditions go here in South Dakota, hot very very hot where we are headed to yesterday it was 110 degrees and today is supposed to be much cooler at 92. i'll take 92 over 110 any day oh yeah folks we'll talk more about this trip in a little bit for now let's drive Good morning everyone. We are at a rest area in South Dakota. The first three days after leaving North Carolina, we took our usual route, which is through Kentucky. We hit Illinois, Indiana, and Iowa. We have been traveling and resting and stopping at parking lots like Walmart, Acabela's, and rest areas. And the heat has been pretty intense, so we've traveled, rested, and then picked up and traveled again for a few hours. We stopped here for coffee and oatmeal. For this trip, my friends, we are winging it. When it comes to any sort of adventure, you can make extensive plans or you can wing it. There's pros and cons for both. Both can be filled with excitement or anxiety. So we've been on the road for three days. So far, so good. But there are some big question marks coming up. One big question mark is heat. It's always a factor. It's something you have to consider. The next is wind. Today we wake up, there's like wind advisories in place. It's roaring outside. Where we are going for this first leg in South Dakota is a place called The Wall. Our destination is in the Buffalo Gap National Grassland. And the camping spot that we have chosen is known as The Wall. It is right on the edge of a cliff and you are overlooking the Badlands of South Dakota. With this trip, we had a general idea of the states and the destinations that we wanted to go but we don't have any concrete plans. Luke and I have the freedom to have a little bit more time where the other trips were always like we had to get back home. We had pets to take care of, kids to take care of. And so we weren't allowed that extra freedom that if we enjoyed a place, we could stay an extra day. No matter what happens on this trip, it's going to be exciting. We have the next few weeks to explore and see what we can get into. And it's gonna be different as Luke and I like to offer a lot of variety. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers, Susie. Cheers. We would be filming this outside, but like we mentioned before, it is really, really windy out there. It's incredibly windy, but the one thing that we don't have to deal with here in South Dakota is high humidity. And that's what we experienced back at home and all over the east. So as we were traveling, you couldn't just stop and go to a campground. I mean, you would be soaked, drenched in sweat, the humidity so high, none of that was comfortable. So it was easier to drive as much as we could and just stop for long breaks with the van and the AC and our fans while we slept at night. For the summertime camping trips, it's the humidity that really makes a big difference. And that's what we experience at home and on the East Coast. And that's not something that we have to worry about here. So it will be hot and we do need shade. You have to take precautions. You can't just be out in the sun all day, but I think that we will be able to camp. Having that low humidity, man, that heat almost means nothing. 
almost. <laughs> yeah, and the wind. The wind is a good thing. Yeah. You know, times like this, but not necessarily to film in outside. <laughs> As Susie mentioned already, we've done our typical, usual route to go across the country, and that involves going through Kentucky. I love Kentucky. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. It's a little bit redneck. I kind of like that. That translates to an interesting experience every single time you go through it. But the thing is, like, there's no traffic. The people are great. There's three main ways to go across the country from where we live. We can go a southern route, too hot. Middle of the country through Tennessee, I hate Tennessee. Everybody hates driving through Tennessee. Or you can go the northern route through Kentucky. We have been hearing from some of you all, the viewers, about your travels this summer. And the ones of you that have hit Tennessee, you were quick to say, oh my gosh, Luke and Susan, you were right. Tennessee is terrible. There are many large cities and a lot of road work. And so it makes for a very frustrating drive. Stick to Kentucky and you'll thank us. And as you all have found out, it is a very pleasant drive. I suppose another question that we have for the wall is how busy is this going to be? That's a big question, I don't know. It is entirely possible that this place is going to be packed, but it's going to be in the middle of the week. So we shall see. For now, we are going to drink some more coffee, eat some oatmeal, and then hit the road as we have a few hours left to drive today. With this trip, we will show you guys everything. So when things don't work out, we will show you what happens, what doesn't happen. We're gonna bring you guys along for every bit of this trip. Thanks for joining us for this part of our South Dakota road trip. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Spend my coin for sure. I'm gonna be myself, or I could be someone else No one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes I just wanna feel alive It's just what I do when I'm out, so Try not to hold me down, feel alive Susie? It's gorgeous here. It really is. It's very windy, but it feels incredible. I don't think it's as hot as was forecasted. We'll just tolerate the wind and enjoy this beautiful camping spot. If we do any sort of talking, it will have to be inside of the van, at least for now. Outside those winds, man, 
or ladies, it is uh, very, very windy. We have a spot here up on a hill and it is incredible. This is really, really cool. We have some good airflow coming into the van, so it's quite comfortable inside of here. Is it windy? Yes, it is. Susie, it is windy, but right here, perfectly fine. The winds are coming this direction, hitting the side of the van that doesn't have any doors, so we can actually have this side open and everything's good. The sun is definitely hot though. There's no doubt about that. As we sit here and chill, we have learned a few things. Number one, it's insanely beautiful here. Number two, it's insanely windy. And number three, it's insanely hot. But thankfully the breeze makes it worth it and makes it doable. Unfortunately, we kind of just have to sit right here. There's not enough shade to put our chairs out. Hopefully as the day progresses, maybe the wind will die down. I don't know. As the sun moves, we may be able to get a nice shady spot and put our chairs out. But yeah, this is a great dispersed camping site, but it's really just for camping. You're not going to be hiking around out here. It's too hot. There's no shade. You're not going to run off and play in the Badlands. But you can definitely sit here and take it in. Susie is right, folks. This is beautiful. It's beautiful, and at the same time, we're like prisoners of the van. You have to be in the shade. It's way too hot. The thermometer has been going up since we got here. Right now it's at 93 degrees, and as soon as you step out in that sun, you feel it. Luckily, there's a nice breeze. That does help. This is such a nice campsite, everyone. Just sitting here, staring at the Badlands. To the Native Americans, they called it land bad. And they called it that because it was so punishing, so grueling, there was no way through it. With the grasslands here, the only thing that you have to worry about are prairie rattlesnakes. They get to be around five feet long. They are venomous. But here's an interesting fact. There has never been a recorded death due to a prairie rattlesnake, ever. They hide in the shade and they hide in the tall grass. As I sit here and take in this view, I was just thinking, you know, it took us a few days to get out here, but this doesn't cost anything. This is a free dispersed camping spot. You could come up here in your car, your SUV. The road is really easy to access and it doesn't cost a thing, it's free. It's freedom, it's peaceful. I love trips like this. Susie, is it hot enough for you? <sighs> Does that feel good? It feels so good. An ice cold uh, drink of some sort. Woo. On your face, on your neck. Whew, it is hot and dry. There has to be literally no humidity out there at all. It's low. It's very low. It feels really good to be honest, but the sun is hot and because of the wind you kind of get pelted with sand so i've spoken about this in previous episodes when it comes to camping out inside of your vehicle or even inside of a tent in hot conditions it's all about airflow if you have airflow you can make it if you have some water you can make it how does your body cool itself off with sweat how does that work? Evaporation. You could take a wet washcloth, a paper towel, put it on your skin, put it around your neck, put it around the main arteries in your body, and it's going to cool you off big time. Just like Susie's doing here. Luckily, tonight, it's going to cool off. That's one of the great things about the Badlands. Like, at times, it's a 50 degree temperature swing. Like yesterday, 110 degrees. The low last night was around 60. From 110 to 60 degrees. That's something else. It is. I wonder if we'll be getting all of our blankets out. Our we might. fleece blankets. <laughs>
it is dinner time but it's still very windy here so we are keeping everything inside of the van and we are keeping a very low profile we put our tabletop on the floor of the van and we are just boiling water to make some ramen noodles and we're going to add some tuna. It's an easy meal and you need things like that when you are traveling because you don't know if you will be able to get outside and cook every time. We don't want to cook inside of the van. We don't want to make a big smelly meat meal like burgers or something like that. So we're keeping it simple and we are still just kind of hunkering down and hiding from the wind and also the heat. It is incredibly windy out there, everyone. In fact, I think the winds are getting stronger. There were times where it was close to like pushing us off the mountain as we were walking around. <laughs> it's windy. Now, we've had some really cool moments here. First off, we've just been kicking back, sitting here at the door, just watching these mountains. It's, it's incredible. Next, there are some bighorn sheep sleeping right below us. <laughs> we were out hiking around, we saw them. They're right down here. It's so cool. Susie, those are the first bighorn sheep I've ever seen. It is for me as well, and that's one of the exciting parts of this trip is I think we're going to see way more wildlife than what's normal. South Dakota has been absolutely beautiful, and this is just the start of it, so I'm super excited about what's to come and what we will see. I think Susie's right. Typically when we go out west, we see zero animals. I'm not sure if there are any in like Colorado, except for like one trip we saw some moose. That, yeah. was, that was it. Yeah. Nothing, Nothing ever. Just too many people scaring off the animals and whatnot. But this trip has been different. Speaking of animals, during dinner, we'll tell you all about this crazy experience we had with a red-tailed hawk at a park on the way out here. It was nuts. I really enjoyed the sound of the screaming kids. Oh, gosh. When we tell this story, you all will see what the reality of nature is. It's beautiful, it's incredible, but there's a side to it that it's easy to overlook. Horrific. Horrific side, yeah. This has been absolutely fantastic. I've enjoyed this immensely, folks. This day has been so low-key, so relaxed. It's gorgeous here. It's quiet, it's peaceful. Thank God for that wind, though. Like, we can't film outside because of it, but that's okay. That is the only thing keeping us remotely comfortable. If it wasn't for that wind, it'd be so raging hot here. So true. Okay, so let's talk about this National Geographic moment that we had on the way here involving this red-tailed hawk. Okay, so I don't even remember what, what state was that. I'm not sure. You guys know how we travel. We hit up rest areas and parks like that, and we'll stop and make our food, and so we had stopped for lunch. I think it was Iowa, but anyway, so yeah, we stopped. We're having lunch. We're out at this picnic table, and so like a little ways in front of us is another table with a family there. Young kids, wife, you know, husband, all that stuff. And like the whole place is just alive with birds, baby birds in the trees, birds all over the place. Everybody's having this swell time, right? So all of a sudden this huge red tail hawk flies in and lands on some sort of like sculpture, right? And we're all like, wow, this is so cool. So I go get the camera, I take a picture. Now, I will be showing pictures of this and I'm not going to show anything graphic, but disturbing for some audiences. Anyway, so, this hawk is sitting there, he's watching, we're all in awe. The kids are like, wow, this is so cool. That's when I like, I turn around and I hear them like start screaming and I look back over and that hawk has like flown in and grabbed like a bird's nest, like a robin's nest and starts eating these birds alive. Yeah, so like kids are screaming, like there's like a little boy, he's like, that's cool. And the little girl's like crying, you know. Well, that hawk just goes on a full-on rampage. It flies over to this bush about like 100 yards away. I go up to it and it is like diving into a bush and it is pulling out baby birds, swallowing them whole. It was so sad. The robins were just in a panic and, and you know, trying to like attack the hawk and trying to make him go away. But I mean, he's a huge, huge predatory bird. He was not intimidated. He did not care that there were tons of people there. And the funny thing is, is like he flew in and you could see he was taking in everything that was happening and he was like planning his attack. And at first I thought maybe 
the family they were feeding him like their picnic food. That's what I thought. Because he came so close to them. No. I, I think I got a blurry picture of like a bird in its mouth as it was like about to fly away. Yeah. And then it was just awful. He would not stop. He just stayed there the rest of the yeah. afternoon just like munching all the birds and it was just so sad. Like little kids were crying and like I'm not going to stop it from doing this because like that's nature for you. There's a reason why that hawk was as big as he was. There's a reason why hawks and eagles they're as big as they are because they're predatory animals. They're snatching up birds, squirrels, mm -hmm. rabbits, dogs, cats. There's numerous videos online of like people at the park and a big hawk swoops in and steals their favorite little dog and like awful things happen. Yeah. Know? And that's the reality of nature. You can't stop a bird like that. That's nature for I you. I mean, it's just nature. That's how it goes. That's what happens. And it was definitely a National Geographic <laughs> moment yeah, in it was. every sense, you know, magnificent <laughs> to like horrific. And yeah. then we all just felt so sad for all the birds, but definitely that hawk knew what he was doing and he had done it before. Oh, I yeah. Think, so I'm pretty sure that guy patrolled that that park that was his zone i mean that hawk was huge yeah at first i thought it was an eagle it's probably the biggest red tail hawk i've ever seen it was gorgeous but so sad yeah. so tragic so crazy anyway now it's time for dinner folks <laughs> that that was story time <laughs> story time story time as for the sun it's beginning to go down we have another about an hour and 15 minutes of light left it really gets dark but for this meal here as Susie said before it's a type of like teriyaki ramen we put some tuna in it it's fantastic it's a great meal super simple to make super easy the tuna is ginger flavored so mm -hmm. it works well together and it's one of those meals where you don't have to cook or do anything except boil water so are you ready to eat yeah you first all right mm. smells good Is it hot? No. Mm. Not with this wind. Cools everything <laughs> off. <laughs> it does. actually calm down like it's breezy it's not windy feels great also it's cooling down right now inside of the van 50 I'm dyslexic 85 degrees <laughs> 50 <laughs> like the heat will drain you it's just been so damn hot <laughs> definitely the heat is exhausting but we've had a great evening. We made dinner. We've been watching the bighorn sheep climb on the sides of these cliffs. It's been really peaceful. I'm hoping to see buffalo. There's buffalo out here as well, and that would be incredible to see one. Maybe tomorrow? Fingers crossed that we yeah. will see that. It's hard not to be in awe of this place. Sit here for hours staring at it. You don't have to say anything. Just look. It's one of those views that you get lost in. Mm -hmm. As like the sun changes, as it's going down, the landscape changes. So like you've been staring at something for like two hours and it's changed like every 30 minutes. It looks different. You see something else to it. It's really peaceful. I think we can even leave the doors open if we wanted to yeah. while we're sleeping tonight. We can put in our screen. Luckily, bugs, haven't been an issue. I've seen a few flies, but I think they have moved on. Very nice. Very peaceful. Yeah.
Good morning, everyone. It is a little bit after 6.30. We got up at 5.30, watched the sunrise. At 5.30, it was 63 degrees. Right now, one hour later, it is 93 and going up. It is hot. And unfortunately, it's not very windy. It is a very warm morning sitting in the floor of the van getting ready with the sun just beating on you. I'm already hot for the day. But we are going to make some coffee, breakfast, and hit the road because it is time to do some driving and exploring. like I'm not going you guys go on all right everyone we are now on the road and as you can see we've been driving past our friends the cows last night at this campsite it was incredible very comfortable cool it was a really nice night a fantastic place to camp very peaceful and quiet Susie how'd we get so lucky I don't know we really <laughs> got lucky with yeah. a fantastic spot I mean it is gorgeous out here on the prairie. Right now we have entered Badlands National Park and we are doing the drive through the park. We have already seen some prairie dogs and some kind of deer. Not sure what it is exactly, but this place is beautiful and you can see so much just from your vehicle. So that's the different thing about this trip is that we really wanted to see stuff. You know, we've done these crazy backpacking trips and hiked, you know, 30 some miles and haven't seen a single animal. So it's pretty cool to be in a place like this and you can actually see it from the comfort of your car. Driving through the park here, everyone, is awesome. This is definitely a cool place to go, a cool place to see. There are so many pinnacles, all these jagged mountains. At the same time, just being outside, taking pictures and whatnot, it's brutal. It is so hot. That sun, that's mean Bob right there. B.O.B., big orange ball, oh yeah. As we're driving through the Badlands National Park, all I can think about is one of our previous trips to New Mexico where we backpacked through the Badlands. This is like the touristy version. You can ride in your vehicle here, whereas we like hiked it previously. Both are very cool. It, it's a very similar experience in many ways. For this section here, we're up on top of this plateau looking down at the Badlands. It's really, really neat. One cool aspect to this park is that you can disperse camp pretty much anywhere you want to. There's certain regulations like being so far away from a road and whatnot, 
but this is pretty much open country. Now, personally, I think that's kind of funny. You could disperse camp anywhere you want to, basically because they know nobody will. This landscape is way too harsh. There's no shade, no water. There's a reason why no one is camping out here. We are finishing up this drive through Badlands National Park and the beauty here is just unreal. But it is time to move on. We are heading across South Dakota today. We are actually headed towards Mount Rushmore and we will be dispersed camping in the Black Hills National Forest. We have some traveling to do and some work to do to figure out our camp spot. Alright everyone, we stopped for a world famous buffalo hot dog. My question is, what part of the buffalo goes into the hot dog? I don't know. Who knows? With the Ford Transit van, did you know that it has a built-in hot dog holder? Absolutely perfect. <laughs> Look at that, Susie. It's perfect. These hot dogs are $4 each, so uh, they better be really, really good. Alright Susie, tell us how it is. All right. Good? Mm -hmm. Worth four dollars? Mm -hmm. mm. It's good, but all hot dogs are good. I would say this is a two dollar hot dog, <laughs> <laughs> not four dollar. You forgot about inflation. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Biden? <laughs> Welcome to the Black Hills National Forest in South Dakota. Luke and I have found our dispersed camping spot for the night and we are literally minutes from Mount Rushmore, which is pretty cool. We can actually hear the helicopter that does the tours there. So we have a little bit of a view behind us and we've popped up our moon awning, which is what we carry with the van. 
and this will shade the entrance to the van but actually on the other side it's already shady we have a breeze it's a really sweet spot so moments ago we wrapped up going to mount rushmore in my opinion it was okay i'd give it a five out of ten it was a little bit more like touristy than i was expecting that's my rating susie what's yours i would give it about a five as well the monument is stunning it's something you can see as you drive by but I wanted to actually pull in and park and get a really good picture. I think it's one of those things, it's a national treasure mm -hmm. and it's something that I've always wanted to see and I wanted to do more than just drive by. Right. So I really enjoyed stopping, getting a photo, but it was one of the most busiest places that yeah. we have stopped at in a really, really long time. And with the 97 degree temperatures, it was a, a quick, <laughs> short visit in and out yeah i think honestly we spent more time in the uh parking deck yeah i think you're right actually <laughs> yeah yeah but um hey i mean you don't want to drive this far and be like oh i should have done that so. right so mount rushmore not my style this here that's much more up my alley this is perfect it and is. this is one of those things that while we were parked at Mount Rushmore, we quickly found this dispersed site. I knew that the Black Hills National Forest was here, and I know that you can disperse camp in National Forest. So right. we actually planned this just like on the fly. We didn't plan to like be so close to Mount Rushmore. It just worked out that way. So whatever day this is on the road, we are done. We are parked <laughs> for the night and you did good finding this. We did good. Actually, I have to give some uh, shout outs to our Patreon donators. We had multiple viewers comment and tell us about the Black Hills area to check it out. So thanks everybody, we appreciate it. Now it's coffee time. My friends, it's coffee time. Cheers. It is a beautiful day here in South Dakota. The day's cruising on. It's about 440. It is hot. I mean, it's like 95 degrees. It's warm. Talk about a really, really nice place to camp. It's peaceful, quiet. We haven't seen anyone, haven't heard anything, with the exception of the like random helicopter flying over. But this is nice. As I've been sitting here enjoying the coffee and this view, I've been researching the Black Hills area. I was interested in what movies have been filmed here, and there's been quite a few. So, Dances with Wolves, some portions of that movie were filmed here. The same goes for National Treasure, and there was a few other movies as well. If you go back to where we camped at last night, in the Badlands, ton of movies have been filmed there. Starship Troopers, which is a fantastic movie. Ah, uh, let's see. There was another one. A movie with Val Kilmer. I'll have to flash the name on the screen. I don't remember it. But, um, Thunderheart. That's what it is. This trip goes to show that even with very little planning, you can go out and you can have amazing adventures. At no point in time have Susie and I known what we were going to do for certain. We'd just been playing the entire trip by ear, off the cuff, and it has worked out so incredibly well. Now, the thing is, when you do it like this, when you plan like this, or not plan, when you just hit the road, when you just go, you have no idea what's going to come your way. Things may go right, things may go wrong so far, things are going great, but at any point in time, something could have gone amiss, right? We could have gone to any of these locations and they're just so busy where we couldn't find a place to camp or something like that. Anything is possible. So far, so good. Before we start dinner, everyone, I figured that we would go over some of the new products that we're testing out with this trip. 
So we picked up a few items here to begin testing out so that we can review later on. So here are the products that I'm talking about. First off, we have the Moon Shade. Now this is very interesting. This attaches to your vehicle with suction cups and you can use it with the van. I can use it with my truck. I can also use it with our new cabin that's at Lone Wolf Mountain. It'll attach to basically any flat surface, and that's pretty neat. It's really versatile, and it was designed for stealth mode. So you don't have to have something permanently attached to your vehicle. And I really like that about this product. We have used it in numerous applications, and we have had it in the van for our previous trips, but unfortunately the wind <laughs> was too rough for it. So it's been great to be able to get it out on this trip. Susie touched upon this being for like stealth mode, and I think that's so important, especially as you travel across the country. Anytime that you have a decked out vehicle that just screams overland, you're going to be a target for vehicle break-ins and so on. With the economy being as bad as it is right now, like break-ins for vehicles is like out of this world. It's super high. Most national forests, national parks recommend that you stay with your vehicle because there's so many break-ins. So there's a big benefit to that. There really is. It's an unfortunate aspect of the day and time that we're living in right now. And we will have a van video coming up, but that's my favorite thing about the van is that it sort of just looks like a large passenger van and we can take it anywhere and it doesn't scream that, you know, it's full of stuff. We always kind of shut the blinds and put in our sunshade, but it's important not to have so much stuff on the outside of your vehicle. To put it simply, you don't want to make yourself a target by covering the outside of your vehicle with tons of gear. The next piece of equipment to talk about is the Dometic fridge that we're using. This is a larger version. In the past, we used a very small one. What was the liter size on that? Do you remember? We were using the 28 liter size, which they have discontinued. They no longer make that model. And we have upgraded to a 45 liter one, and it is quite a bit bigger. We have that thing packed full. And it's kind of nice because you don't have to resupply as often, but it is bigger. One thing that we've noticed so far while using this product, this new fridge, is that it's very energy efficient. Whereas the other one, it did a good job as well, but we figured that the energy loss would be quite a bit more. And I can't say that we've really noticed much of a difference between the smaller size and the bigger one. I like it a lot. The only issue that I had was that it takes up a bit more of our floor space. So if space is like a really important factor, you have to consider it. But we wanted to test it out because it's nice to stay out longer and not have to hit up a store. Plus, you all ask about these larger ones all the time. So our review, will be coming up in the future. Since we're talking about the fridge, we have to talk about power. So for this trip, we have some additional power components that are helping us basically stay out longer. With our previous overland trip, we went down to the coast and we had issues. We ran out of juice. It was just so freaking hot down there. We consumed all of our power. That means the fridge didn't have power and everything spoiled on the inside. So we've upgraded just a little bit here. For this trip, we are using our Blue Eddy power unit, but this one has an expandable power pack with it that we have brought along to test out. We have an additional 2000 watt hours of juice just in case we need it in a relatively small form factor. It's nice to be able to have that much power, shove it underneath the seat and access it when we need it. For dinner, folks, we have bacon cheddar cheeseburgers with a little bit of barbecue sauce on the side. Super ooey, gooey, and delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, everyone, it is beginning to cool down. After a very long, hot day, it is cooling down. Today has been good, though. It's been a ton of fun. I was thinking about this earlier. Okay, so out west, super hot during the daytime, but it's a dry heat, right? Low humidity. So at nighttime, the sun goes down, it cools down. It's super, super comfortable. I would say overall today's been really pleasant. It has been. The shade has been great here in this camp spot. I was thinking like how different last night. <laughs> right. 
how different was that from tonight? It's yeah. just like day and night. Luckily, we've been by ourselves the entire time. So special. It is so special. Yeah. And I, I don't know if that goes to like what we said before about bad economy, high gas prices, but there's not many people out on the roads. There's not many people out on the trails. It's mm -mm. very unusual, in fact. All right, All right, let's let's go for this. Let's try this. Same time? Yeah, I'm gonna, should we dip? I'm Do gonna go dip? without a dip first. Okay, no dip. So, okay, ready? Here we go. Okay. Mmm. Freaking fantastic, folks. Mm. That bacon really takes it mm, mm -hmm. right up to the top. You might be wondering about a fire tonight. Even though we have an awesome fire pit, there was a sign saying no fires, so I'm going to follow that rule. No fires. Plus, this place is so dry. Even if you could have fires, I don't think I would have one. It's too windy, too dry. Not going to fool with it. I have to say that this Jack Daniels barbecue sauce is out of this world. It's really good. It's like maple barbecue, so it takes the burger to like a new level, yeah, new flavor. It is <laughs> fantastic. So as far as all of our traveling and all the states that we have been to so far, I will say that South Dakota is really clean. Mm -hmm. They're doing a great job. I mean, just driving the highway, everything was really clean. We didn't see a lot of trash. And with our camping experience so far, all of the campsites have been really clean. At the same time, everything has felt like extremely safe. Mm -hmm. All of the areas seem good. Everything is well maintained. I mean, like some places you go out and you're like, oh man, what are we doing out here? The entire state's been fantastic. Yeah. It has a wild remote feeling. Yeah, it does. But we're not nearly as remote as some of the trips that we have gone to. Right. You get the feeling here that like everybody has a handgun like at the ready. <laughs> like everybody's prepared to take care of themselves which makes a lot of sense. That makes you feel safe in a way. Maybe you understand what I'm talking about, maybe not. But anyways, folks, we are going to finish up dinner and basically call it a night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have some traveling to do tomorrow. Who knows where we're going to end up? <laughs> I can't wait to find out. I have no idea. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's a good, cool morning. We woke up freezing, and that's basically because we left the van open and let all of the cool air in. So we woke up to like 60 degrees, and it's chilly. The wind was blowing right into the van. So Luke had to get up and close the back doors, and now it's kind of warming up again. But I definitely slept great because of that cool air. Very quiet here, very peaceful, no complaints. Good morning, everybody, good morning. Like Susie said, good, cool morning. It's like 59 degrees. <laughs> I haven't felt that in a little while. At least on this trip, I haven't felt anything like that. Last night, I was laying here in the van, just listening, and it was the most unusual experience because like, it wasn't just like silent. It was more than that. The only sound that I could hear was like my heart beating. It was that quiet. There was like no wind, no bugs, nothing. Just absolute, complete silence. I'm not sure if I've ever heard it that silent before. When you're laying there and all you can hear is like thump, 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 like that's quiet. We got a notification on our phone saying that rain was going to begin in about 10 minutes. Looked at the radar. There is some showers going by. I'm contemplating taking down the awning real quick. Putting up a dry awning is a win. Putting up a wet awning and have to deal with it later on, that's a loss. So I guess I'll go ahead and just take that thing down real quick. It's time to get to action, folks. That's what I'll do. Kitty, I want you to stay right there. It's time for men to act and for 
little ladies to stay warm. I'll be back. I'll be back to take care of your needs real soon. I'll do what you say. <laughs> We have hit the road and we are headed to Custer State Park. We want to do the scenic drive that they have there. And we heard you can see lots and lots of wildlife. So that's the plan for this morning. And then after that, we will make the plans for the rest of the day. We do plan to camp in the area or at least in the Black Hills National Forest again. So we will be looking for another campsite later on. looks like here in about nine miles we'll be at Custer State Park. I can't wait to see this place. I have to say so far everyone, South Dakota has truly impressed me. This is a beautiful state. There's so much variety out here. It's just incredible. The prairie forest, the Black Hills, I mean it's, it's something special. The only thing is, folks, it's hot. It's hot. Coming back in the fall and exploring this place in more detail, doing some hiking, that would be fantastic. Unfortunately, because of the heat during the day, it's almost impossible to do a lot of hiking out here. It's beautiful here, and I definitely think that there's a lot more to explore, but it would have to be done at a different time of the year.
Susie, it looks like you have a little bit of a problem. Yes, I'm gonna just stay put right here, let them do their thing. This is my first Buffalo traffic jam though. Alright everyone, we just wrapped up Custer State Park, which was awesome. One of the most beautiful places I've ever been. It was incredible. Now we are going to head on a road called Needles. Honestly, I'm not sure what this is, but we've had so many viewers tell us that we have to do it. So we will. Susie, I have no idea what to expect. I don't know, but I'm kind of nervous. Like, is it like a crazy, twisty, turny road? Um, who knows? I don't know. Yeah. We'll find out very soon. Folks, let's continue on. Susie and I are basically at the top of this mountain. We're still in South Dakota, outside of the Crazy Horse Memorial. In fact, at the top of this mountain, I believe you can see the uh, memorial, but basically we're camping next to the road. This is a forest road, and basically you could camp anywhere that you want to out here. There's really not that many spots. This is about the best of the best, but it is beautiful. It really is. Right now with the van, we're basically playing the game of like parking it in the shade. And as the sun moves, we move too. That is the only way really to stay cool and comfortable here. Otherwise, it is so hot, so hot. As far as the elevation goes, right now we are almost at 7,000 feet. It's like 6,700, something like that. While it's still very warm up here, at least it's not raging hot like it was at a lower elevation. My friends, it is coffee time. Cheers. Cheers with the ant on it. I don't mind at all. <laughs> extra, <Cheers. laughs> extra protein. Right. <laughs> cheers, Susie. Cheers. You never forget to cheers the lady. I think this heat's getting to me. I think so. <laughs> I'll just drink your coffee. <laughs> it's funny, it's like in the sun, I mean, it's like 90 something degrees. Here in the shade, like it's so breezy, it's so dry. 
like it's almost to the point where you need a jacket. Like it's almost chilly. It's funny how it's all because of that sun. We call it Mean Bob, big orange ball. Man, that sun is mean. He is mean. <laughs> I think he's fried my skin. Yeah. I'm one of those people that I do not really tan at all. I stay this color no matter how much I'm in the sun. I'm only going to go from this color or red. <laughs> so I feel like he like burns my skin. Yeah. Then I come sit in the shade and I'm like, Ooh, I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely be getting a jacket later yeah. tonight. And I know that we won't leave the van open. Not the, all uh, of it. The low tonight is what? 40? 40, 48. 48. Yeah. We're at quite a bit of a higher elevation than we were the last couple of nights. But I tell you what, this has been such a great trip. It's funny, no one ever mentions South Dakota, but it is amazing. I have fallen in love with this state. It's beautiful. I think we're sitting over 7,000 feet right now in elevation. Close to it, yeah, I think. And it's beautiful here. And I was scrolling through my pictures that I've taken and I was just like, wow, look at the vast differences in the landscapes that we yeah. have encountered. South Dakota is not the state that people talk about, but like they should. This place is incredible. I want to come back in the fall. I think it'd be really, really cool to explore this land. You know, it's like with the Black Hills area, it's vast and you can go anywhere you want to. And there's a lot of places to go. A little bit of research, just a little bit of planning. I mean, we've basically gotten up, done a few things, pulled over, had lunch, said, okay, where are we going to camp tonight? And we've been able to figure it out. On and the fly. On the fly. You know, none of this was like done beforehand. Mm -hmm. And it's been really neat, the places that we have found. And it's not busy, guys. It's not busy. <laughs> it's, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but like we went to like Mount Rushmore. That was busy. But everything else? No. Yeah, we had to stop at some of these sites. I mean, if you're all the way out here, we're from North Carolina. It takes a lot of work to get out here. <laughs> a lot of work. And I was like, if I'm going to be that close, I just want to see it. So things like that, super busy. So Mount Rushmore, I give it a 5 out of 10. It's okay. Uh, Crazy Horse, I give that a 3 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, like, that's been the same for ever. You could see people up there doing stuff, but, like, it has not changed in a really long time. I don't know what they're doing, but no. it should be done in about 100 years. They started work on that, like, 48. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy, horse. Well, I just thought we, you know, we would have to see that, too. It's all in the same area. So why not, you yeah. know? It's so funny. It's like, I'm so antisocial that you know, so we go there and I'm like, ah, I really feel out of place here. Then I head off into the woods and I'm like, ah, feels good. <laughs> A special thank you goes out to everyone who was uh, speaking to Susie and I about coming to South Dakota. The Needles Highway was incredible. That was so much fun, so beautiful. Yeah, we really appreciate the suggestions. Mm -hmm. And that happens quite often because we get emails and messages from tons of viewers. And Luke and I both read the emails and the messages. And, and we're taking notes. You yeah. guys say something cool, we write it down and we go back to it. Yeah, it's been a while. I don't know if you ever mentioned it, but a viewer said that we should try like real authentic oh, Korean yeah. food. And we actually got the chance to do that. We were out of town and we were like, okay, let's see if there is a Korean restaurant, like a real authentic one. And we found it and the food was incredible. And I was Amazing. just like, you know, we probably would have never done that if someone hadn't said, hey, you do need to go find this and check mm -hmm. it out. And so a lot of things you just don't think about. Yeah. Yeah, so guys and gals, thank you so much for everything. We really appreciate it. Just as with all of the other trips, this was done or this trip is being done on a very low budget. We haven't stayed at any hotels. Everything we're using in here pretty much makes sense for the common person. Nothing's crazy expensive. We have been able to cook most of our meals. We have grabbed a few things out, like the, the hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> the $4 hot dog. The $4 hot dog. <laughs> uh, but there's a big difference with this trip versus previous trips. Some of the years that we were traveling were like right in the middle of COVID. Things weren't open and we just didn't really go in anywhere. So we've had a little bit of uh, more freedom, I guess, with this yeah. trip about- COVID's over. Yeah, yeah. I think that's like the biggest change from all of the previous trips. COVID's over, 
no one's wearing a mask. All the little small businesses, they are running, all of the restaurants are open yeah. again, and so we do cook most of our meals, but we've definitely had a few times where we've grabbed something, and, and that's been fun too. Yeah, it has yeah. been. For tonight's dinner, I am making some beef lo mein. It's ramen noodles again, but I have some steaks and a green pepper that I'm gonna add to it. This is a meal that I was gonna use earlier on in the trip, but due to the wind, we haven't been able to do much cooking until last night, and we went with cheeseburgers. But tonight, it is beef lo mein. So you may be wondering, Luke, Susan, why are you guys hiding right here behind the van? Well, that's because the winds are just like coming this way. This is like the only wind-free spot. And to be real with you guys, we're tired. We didn't put up our awning. <laughs> we're like, we just want to take a break. We just want to rest. It's been a really good day, but after a full day of driving around and being out in the sun. And filming. And filming. And then when you get to camp, you're just kind of like, okay, What's the bare minimum that we have to do? So, all right, let's eat. Okay, I'm hungry. Yeah, thank you so much, Susie. This looks awesome. Yeah, this looks really good. Ladies first. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Simple, good. Mm -hmm. That is fantastic. Mm -hmm just like this campsite. I know, it's so peaceful here. Mm -hmm. I like the view because you can just see all the way around us, you have a view. You can see mountains way off in the distance. We have all these trees, but it's very open. So you can just see long distances. It's very interesting how like, with this landscape, it's like the prairie meets the forest. The reason they call this the Black Hills is because like the appearance of the trees, they're dark. That's the reason why. The Native Americans would call this the Black Hills. A little while ago, we received an email from a guy, and he was asking whether or not it's camping when you watch a movie at night, like I oftentimes do. My answer to that question is pretty simple. The way that you want to camp is the right way. If there's something that you like to do, do it. And it's not my place to decide whether or not someone's camping or not. I always thought that was a, a silly question. Respectfully, but a little silly. It goes back to like, there's not one right way to do it. Yeah. If you like to car camp, you're still camping. You're still getting out there. If you enjoy doing like the really long distance and being like super minimalistic, it's still camping. You're still enjoying mm -hmm. the outdoors. We're all enjoying it in one way or the other. Some people just love to like load up their car, cook a huge meal, you know, steaks and kick back, relax. Maybe when you go camping, that's the only time that you get to like watch a movie or do something that you want to do because when we're at home, we're easily distracted. It's true. You know? So I think it's important like do it however you want to. Eat whatever you want to. It doesn't <laughs> matter, you yeah. know? I think that's, that's, that's what's important at the end of the day. It's like it doesn't matter. Don't critique others. Yeah. Do whatever you want to. Just enjoy it. I think that's what it's all about. Yeah. enjoying it do it your way folks you could do a trip like this or it could be simple or it could be more complex yeah you can do this on your private property you could do it in your backyard you know you can take that email and you can look at it in kind of like the way that like society is today people love to judge others let's get away from that everyone do their own thing do it your way yep be unique be <laughs> be weird it's all okay it's yeah. all good we're gonna wrap things up here and finish our dinner, but I'm gonna end on this note and I want everyone to go live their best life. Do it how you wanna do it when it comes to enjoying the outdoors.
and feel free to share with us what you do and share with the community what you do because maybe we want to try it and you may want to try what we do maybe the next time you go camping you want to watch a movie so or listen to a podcast when you hike yeah i have a friend of mine he is a serious outdoorsman i mean like he's hiked the at and so on i think he's done that actually twice he listens to music and podcasts the entire time so loud like he can't hear anything <gasps> but like to him that's how he does it and i think it's so cool yeah yeah Man, <laughs> I have nothing to say. I'm tired. <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> Life is so good. We don't have anything else to say. Yeah. All right. <laughs> We're done. Bye. See you later, okay? Bye. I'll talk to you. I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Our burden friend over here. <laughs> That's what I call the camera, my burden. It's a growth. It is a growth. But yeah. Ah, it's so much fun. You just have to have energy, which I don't have. Okay, I'm done. All right. <laughs> We're eating. It is time to go to bed. It's been a really good day. It has been a good day. I'm tired and ready for sleep, and I know I'm going to sleep good. I'm actually covered up. Feels good tonight. Yeah. For the first time tonight, it feels amazing. Yeah, usually it's kind of hot, and so we don't even bother with a blanket, but tonight I'm prepared. I'm already covered up. I have some extra blankets, and... Uh, I'm good. Yeah. I, I sleep next to the wall of backpacks, but, you know. That's comfort right there. I it wish is. I had a wall to sleep next to. The <laughs> coolness. Oh, Want to switch? No, I, I've really bonded to these backpacks. <laughs> this is like my spot in the van. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I always sleep on this side, and I have a all the pillows and a super comfortable setup, so I can't give it away. I sleep in very odd positions. <laughs> I toss and turn all night long. It's more like I pass out. I don't go to sleep. I just... <laughs> I roll until I pass out. <laughs> That's how I do. So, uh, Let's see. Uh, we did move the uh, van back a little bit. Leveled it just a little bit. You know, it's funny. It's like you see oftentimes with like these overland channels, these people, they spend so much time leveling their vehicle. Like when you're from the mountains like we are, nothing's level so it's like you just get accustomed like i've never once leveled a vehicle ever no i mean <laughs> here's a secret all you have to do is just sleep with your head higher than your feet that's all you have to do so i mean you know sometimes we sleep this way and then sometimes i have to put my pillows down there and put my feet this way it's not a big deal that's the secret is just park where you want to park where it looks flat and then when you crawl into your bed just make sure your head is higher than your feet. Yeah. It's that simple. <laughs> it's so simple. But, yeah, I've seen people really work super hard to get things, like, really level. And I'm just like, yeah. I don't understand why they're doing that. I mean. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> We're accustomed to rolling around all night. That's how that goes. Nothing in the mountains is ever flat. You just no. don't know. All right, folks. We're going to bed. Good night for now. Good night. See you in the morning.
Good morning, my friends. Good morning, Susie. Good morning. Last night was absolutely incredible. Where we slept at, it was so cool, so comfortable, so quiet. Not a single car, nothing went by. Last night you experienced just how quiet it is here. Like, you don't hear anything. Did not hear a single thing. I could not believe that there were no cars, no one was out. This place is pretty remote and no one comes up here. You know, this morning we haven't seen anyone, heard anyone, and we're making our way out on these gravel roads, but it's just, this was a really good find, really good. And with that, everybody, we are going to wrap up part one of this road trip. Our plan is to head to Colorado unless something catches our eye. Hmm, maybe, we'll see. But folks, thank you so much for joining us for this trip. Make sure to stay tuned to part two, which is coming up soon. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up because it does help the channel. If you want to support the Outdoor Gear Review, you can do so on YouTube, Patreon. It is appreciated. Folks, be well, take care, strength and honor. Bye.